In this clip, I want to cover the basics of graphing rational functions. I want to show you my three-step approach and then go through a couple of examples with you. In the three steps, first step, I look at what, the de what uh, makes the denominator zero. What makes the denominator zero, or the values of x that make the denominator zero, are the values of x that create the vertical asymptotes. The next thing I'm going to look at, or try to de determine, are the intercepts. I need to determine both the w x and the y intercepts. Well, in this, for the x intercepts, what I do is I look at the numerator. The numerator of the rational function, will, the values of x that make the numerator zero, are the values that, that give me the x intercepts. And evaluating the function when x is zero, like every function, helps me determine the y intercept. Now, what differentiates uh, rational functions from the polynomial functions that we studied is what happens when x gets big? What happens when x goes to infinity? In this uh, step, what we have to do is consider there's basically three different cases to consider. The first case, and this is my symbolism, is to take a look at the degree of the numerator in relation to the degree of the denominator. Now, we did covered degrees in polynomials. Now, we're going to compare the degrees. When the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. This I'll prove in class, but the, for now, we're going to accept this fact. And then the second thing I look at is, um, well, the other case that'll, that'll exist is when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. In this case, I'll prove this in class as well, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals the leading coefficient of the denominator over the leading coefficient of the numerator. And the third and final case is what, uh, what happens when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. In this case, um, there will be no horizontal asymptote. Now, this I'll cover in class. I'm gonna, the two examples I'm going to demonstrate for you are these two examples, where the degree of the numerator is less and equal. So this case we won't consider till later on in the chapter. Let's take a look at an example. In this case, we're looking at, first what we'd like to do is get the um, rational functions in this form where the denominator is factored so we can analyze it. Uh, taking a look at the first step, what makes the denominator zero creates your vertical asymptotes. In this case, uh, the vertical asymptotes are going to be at x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. The next thing we'll look at is uh, what creates the intercepts. Uh, what makes the numerator zero is 2. So therefore, the x-intercept is 2, 0. And when I evaluated this particular function for, at 0, um, I got also 2. Uh, now, what happens when x gets big? When x gets big, in this case, the degree of the numerator is, is less than the degree of the denominator. There'll be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, let's take a look at a graph. Let's graph this function. And I'll go through the thinking that you, the process that you need to go through when you graph these things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull in my vertical asymptotes using the steps. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, and then there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, right about there. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to plot my intercept. So there's an intercept at 2, 0. So I want to plot a point here. And there's an intercept at 0, y-intercept at 0, 2. These two points will help me figure out what what the, the graph, what kind of shape the graph is going to take. And then lastly, there's a horizontal asymptote. I'll, and I'll put that in. Now this horizontal asymptote only comes into play when x is, is big. And in between these asymptotes and in and around here, the, the x values are not very big. So now, raise that up so you can see the dotted line. Now let's figure out um, how this graph, what, what kind of shape it's going to take. Um, now, in between here, although the, when I look at the graphs, the x-intercept is the most important. This is the only place here at 2, 0 that the graph crosses or touches. And since, if you remember the, our discussion on multiplicity, this zero, or this intercept, only occurs once. So the graph is going to pass through here. So since the zero, two is the intercept, there's only one thing this graph can do. This graph, it's really a hyperbola, but it'll be like a, a little parabola inside here. 
and as x gets close to these vertical asymptotes, the y values go to infinity. And it has to take this form and not the other form because it would have to cross the x-axis. It can only you can only do that here at 2. Now, taking a look at this side, what happens? Well, there are two things that could happen. If it crosses this at 2, it would cross from it could cross from below, come up, and then as x gets big, it's going to come back down to 0. It could do that. Or it could go the other way. It could come down, pass through here through 2, and then come up. I really don't know which way it's going to happen, but what I'm going to do is test a point out here, like 3. If it's positive, then I know that it's going to be the first way that I looked at. And if it's negative, it's got to come down from below here. Now, let's try uh, a point. Try to, uh, the x value of 3. When I put 3 in, I get a positive number in the numerator and two positive numbers in the denominator. So um, it's going to, the first situation that I, that I talked about is the situation that's going to happen. This graph's going to come through 2, come up, and go back. And as x gets big, it's going to go to 0. And then obviously, it's going to go to negative infinity on this side. Now, last but not least, let's, there's always something happening in between these two asymptotes to the right and now to the left. We have to take a look at this. Now here, there's only two things that could happen. It could be going to zero from the positive end, or it could be going to zero from the negative end. And again, what I'm going to do is test a value of x out here, negative 2. If I put negative 2 in here, that makes this negative. That makes this negative and this negative, resulting in a positive denominator. So a negative over a positive means that it's going to be coming from the negative end. And so the graph of this function is going to look like this. And that's it for that case. Now let's take a look at the case where the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. Well, the three steps are the same for all, for all three cases. And that is, the first thing I look at is what happens, what makes the denominator 0 is going to be a vertical asymptote. In this case, x equals negative 1. And what makes the numerator 0 is 1 half. So there be, that becomes my x-intercept at 1 half 0. And what uh, evaluating for when x is 0, become, this becomes negative 1. So I have my, my intercepts. Now the big difference between this case and the first case, the example that I went over is that the degree is equal. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of the lead coefficient. The lead coefficient of the numerator is 2, and the lead coefficient of the denominator is 1. So the ratio is y equals 2. And now I'll go through the process of graphing this to show you what it looks like. The same basic things. You, you have to get credit for all these three steps, and you have to get credit for trying to put in. Well, the first thing I always do in this case is I put in the, the, uh, the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 get in there. And then I'm going to put in the x vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. That's out here. And then I'm going to plot my intercepts. And I have intercepts at 1 half, so a pro let me get a different color here, at approximately here. And then 0, negative 1, approximately here. Now, knowing again that the multiplicity of this x-intercept, this 0, is odd, I know that the graph has to pass through. So there's a little um, guesswork here. I know what's going to happen. I know that it's got to go through this intercept. It's got to go through this point. And then as x gets big, this function is going to level, level off at y equals 2. And again, with the um, vertical asymptotes, as, it gets as the x values get close to negative 1, this goes to negative infinity. Now this graph is a little more curved than the one I just drew, but you get the general idea. And I know that the only thing that can happen since it's going to 2, it has to come go to 2 from above, sorry, from below or above, that the only thing it can do is come from above. Because if it were to come from below, it would have to cross the x-axis again, and it can't. It, the only place that it does is at the x-intercept. So these are two examples. The case where the degree of the numerator is greater will go over in class. There are no horizontal asymptotes for that. And for the more difficult ones, um, you know, we have holes and other things that could happen with these graphs. This is just the basics. And once you understand the basics, then you can graph pretty much any rational function.